Hello and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. If you happen to have an old unused laptop laying around, <laughs> like I do, I've got a couple of them, well, this is a project you won't want to miss. In this video, I'll show you how to install Bodicera to a 14-year-old laptop. I did encounter a problem due to the age of the machine I was using, so stay tuned. In this video, I'll show you how to get Bodicera installed, and if you run into the same issue I did, I'll show you how to fix it. Let's get started. If you're anything like me, you have a hard time throwing out old laptops. So, <laughs> I've got a few here. Uh, this one was given to me some time ago to wipe the drive clean. Then I was told I could do whatever I want with it. So, uh, I wound up using it, actually, for a video a couple years ago. And, yeah, this machine is a Dell D620. It is 14 years old. It's quite old. The last time I used it was experimenting with React OS. But anyway, let's take a look at the specs on it, just so you get an idea. I'm not going to go through all of these, so feel free to pause it if you want to take a look. The CPU is a 1.83 GHz Intel Core Duo T2400. It's got 1 GB of DDR2 RAM and a 120 GB hard drive, which we're going to use to install Botocera on. If you go to wagnerstechtalk.com, forward slash PC Retro Gaming, you'll come to this page. It's basically a collection of all my notes on this particular project of using an old laptop with Botocera. It also includes a workaround to an issue I ran into, which we're going to cover later in this video. First off, we're going to go ahead and set up our USB boot drive. We're going to go ahead and plug in this 16 gigabyte micro SD card into this thumb drive. And then I'm going to go to botocera.org and click the link over here, go to Downloads, and we're going to download Botocera for the PC. There's two links here, one for x86 older laptops or desktops, and one for x64. Not only that, Botocera will run on all kinds of different devices. In fact, my last video was installing it on a Raspberry Pi 4. But in this case, we're going to install it to our old laptop. If you don't already have Belina Etcher, you can go to belina.io forward slash etcher, after install, go ahead and select the image file that you just downloaded. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and select this one here. Click Open. Then we'll make sure we select the correct micro SD card or USB stick. And yes, that's correct. Then we hit Continue. And if everything is correct, go ahead and click Flash. And the image will be burned to your USB stick, or in my case, a micro SD card on a USB stick. Now we'll hit Close. To make things a little more accessible for this video, I went ahead and used this USB hub. It's just a USB 2.0 hub. I'm going to plug in the thumb drive, and I'm going to plug in the receiver for my controller that I'm going to use, which is the same one I used in my last video. And we're going to try it out on this Dell D620. So I'm going to power it on, and I'm going to hit F12 to change the boot sequence to the USB drive. Now keep in mind, different computers are going to use different function keys, so you'll need to look that up for your PC or laptop. And we'll move down to select the USB storage device, which is our USB thumb drive, and we'll go ahead and boot off of it. So we'll go ahead and hit Enter, and it'll boot off the USB thumb drive, launching Botocera. And at this point, it will expand the micro SD, so it'll take advantage of the entire size of the micro SD card and then continue to boot into Botocera. The first thing that you want to do once Botocera has booted is to go ahead and set up your controller. So I'm going to just quickly go through this. I'm going to hold down a button, go through all the buttons on the controller until I get down to the very bottom where I'm going to select the hotkey of select. And now our controller is configured. I just want to make sure you're fully aware in this following step, we're going to completely wipe out the hard drive. So back up any important data on the laptop, because the drive will be erased in this next step. 
All right, so now hit start on your controller, move down to the network settings, and go ahead and enable Wi-Fi if it's not already enabled, and select your SSID. Once you do that, enter your Wi-Fi key, and then hit back on the controller to go back, and you'll see Wi-Fi enabled, and if you go back in, you'll see your IP address. That means you're connected. At this point, we'll move down to the system settings, and from here, scroll down towards the bottom until you see Install Botocera on a new disk. Press A, and then select your target. I'm selecting my hard drive, and then the target architecture of x86-64. Select Are You Sure? Go ahead and check that. Move down to Install, and press A. At this point, it'll download Botocera off the internet and install it to your local hard drive. Once finished, press A, and then back, go to quit, and before we restart, I'm going to remove the USB hub, and now we'll move down to restart system, press A, and our system will be restarted. And we are now running Botocera off our hard drive. Once the reboot has completed, you will again need to set up your controller and your network just as we did before, and then we'll be ready to copy our games. When you first install Botocera, it comes with a number of freeware games, ports, and shareware games as well. It's pretty cool, but obviously we want to run our very own games. So we're going to switch over to a Windows 10 computer on the same network and type backslash backslash Botocera and press enter. Then you'll see a share called simply share. <laughs> and we're going to copy some BIOS files. So we're going to double click on BIOS and then copy a few for Dreamcast over here and another for PlayStation 1. Now we'll go into the ROM subdirectory and take a look. There are a bunch of different emulators that are pre installed with Botocera. So we're going to turn this 14 year old computer into a retro gaming powerhouse. All right, so if we go to Atari 2600 and open this text file, you can see in here, these are the different file types that are supported by this particular emulator. I'm going to go ahead and copy a few games. Actually, I'm going to load it up with a bunch more, and I'm going to show you how to get them to show up in the list. Hit Start, move down to Game Settings, and then scroll on down until you see Update Game List. Press A and A again, and it'll update your game list. Now it's showing all the games that I have just copied over to Botocera. I'm going to simply fast forward through this real quick, but give you an idea of the type of systems. Okay, so now let's go into Virtual Boy, and I'm going to show you how to get some box art. So if we go down to Scraper, I'm going to set Box Source to 3D, and move on down to Scrape Videos, and enable that, Scrape Now, and simply press A on Start. If you look in the upper right hand corner you'll see where it's going out to the internet and downloading artwork and video and all kinds of game information as well. If we hit select and then move on down to game view list style I'm going to change it to detailed and now that we have a little bit of our artwork showing up here we now have some game information as well as video clips and yeah this is pretty darn cool especially on this very old laptop. Before we get into the gameplay, let's go to Start, and then move down to System Settings, and go to the Developer Options here, and select Show Frame Rate. This is so, while I'm playing these games, you can get an idea of what the actual frame rate is. Alright, we'll switch over to Nintendo 64, and as you can see, we've got a few games. We'll go ahead and load up Mario Kart. Now what you're seeing on screen is not a video capture, it's actually the laptop screen itself. I thought this would be a better way of demonstrating than going straight to my video capture card. If you look in the lower left, you can see the percentage of the frames per second. But the gameplay is really really good. 
It played very smoothly and I played this for quite a while. Now we're going to move on to Drift Out on the Neo Geo. And I'm very lousy at this game, my apologies. But you can see it's running at a steady 60 frames per second. Not bad. Ugh. <laughs> Alright, now we're going to move on to Tekken 3 on the PlayStation 1. Sit down, buddy. <laughs> While filming this video, I did run into one issue, and that was there was a new update of version 5.27, which for machines that are 14 years old or older is a problem. It seemed to lock up at this point, but it wasn't really locked up. It was the network was active and I could remote connect, and I wound up reinstalling 5.26 or reverting back to 5.26. I've got all the instructions on my website. Basically, you log in over PuTTY, over SSH, to your Botocera host, and you log in as root in your password Linux, and you can run this command that's on the, the website that will allow you to revert back to 5.26 instead of 5.27, which is the latest release. Again, most people aren't going to need this. This is for people like myself who are wanting to use an old old computer or laptop. All right, once that's done, just type reboot, press enter, and your machine will be reverted back to 5.26. I can't tell you how much I appreciate the Botocera developers. While filming this video and I ran into issues, I was receiving feedback from the developers on the comment section of my prior video on the Raspberry Pi 4 Botocera install. And they were commenting and letting me know things that I can try and how I can get back up and running. And I put these instructions on my website. I hope you enjoyed this video on running Botocera on an older laptop. I think it's a great project, great weekend project. You'll have a lot of fun with it. And thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. If you want to see more from Wagner's Tech Talk, please click the subscribe. And with that... I shall talk to you very soon.